Jamson Entertainment. How's it going, YouTube? This is prep work for X Men Apocalypse. I'm going to go over really first class and Days of Future Past, but watching Days of Future Past again just now, I come to realize all the X Men movies are the same X Men movies. Which makes them good and bad. Spoiler alert! You've been warned. As per usual, spoiler alert. <laughs> now, the X-Men movies have been out for quite some time. I was still a kid in high school when the first one came out, and it was freaking awesome! It was awesome. I didn't really grow up with X-Men. I didn't read the comics. I'm not much of a comic book guy. I, I only own Nightfall, which is the Bane story. There's three volumes. That's that's it. Now, since Marvel has been doing an awesome job, and when I say Marvel, I mean Disney, with their story arc, their entire franchise, their phases, there's a whole lot more comics I want to get. Another topic. X-Men, with Fox, it seems... Now, grant you... A lot of stories are guilty of doing this. Star Wars is one of them. They recycle the same story over and over again. If you've seen Star Wars 4, 5, and 6, you don't really need to watch 1, 2, and 3. And Force Awakens just came in and... It took 4, 5, and 6 and put them in one movie, but they did it in such a way where it worked, and I have great hopes for episode 8. It's going to be awesome. I know I'm getting sidetracked from X-Men here, but it's just an example. Now, Star Wars Recycled, it, it seemed, it, it's twice so far. <laughs> yeah, twice. Twice so far. Did it with 1, 2, and 3. Didn't do so well. Third one is kind of the best out of the prequels. You get to see Anakin turn, and they actually do a better job. You, you get Star Wars with that. Force Awakens, they, they show you Star Wars again. They, they show you, like, yeah, we can do it again. And then we're going to give you better stuff later, which awesome. Still, another video on all together. I'm really getting off track here. I'm sorry. There's a lot to talk about. This year is huge for movies. Huge! So, the recycled story for X-Men. It's mutants versus non-mutants. And more often than not, Magneto is the villain, and Charles Xavier is, well, the savior. The uniting force for the good, good mutants, and Magneto is the uniting force for the bad mutants. It's, it's a story about prejudice. Prejudice is bad, and they just keep on beating it into your head with every single X-Men movie. And I am sure that there are other stories that they can be telling. Now, the one thing they're doing better than DC, Fox is doing better than, than WBDC, Warner Brothers, is that they're, they're competing with Disney Marvel, but they're not at the same time. They're doing their own thing, but they are... They are going to have their own Civil War type movie. Batman v Superman and Civil War, same storyline. Ideologies are different and they're fighting about them. And that's what X-Men has been doing since the beginning. And Apocalypse, they haven't shown much. It still looks like it's one side versus the other, but you have Apocalypse been coming in. And I... I guess he's a big deal. I mean, they're building him up to be a big deal. I don't know. The story of Apocalypse so far told in the trailer is that he's the first mutant. And he seemed to be a god among mutants. And the way that they're trying to figure him out, this one group of people, I'm not sure who they are yet, is that religion is based off him. It's it's weird. I don't know. I won't know until I see it in a couple weeks. But 
Okay, I'll start with the story of First Class. So when I started watching First Class, I was confused. I thought I got the wrong movie. Because it opens up exactly like the first X-Men. It starts off with Eric Lyncher, Magneto. He's a young kid, back in the 1940s during World War II, in a concentration camp. And he's being separated from his mother. And this is the first time he really f discovers his power through his agony and heartbreak of being separated from his mother by the evil Nazis. And he He's being dragged away from by, by like four or five, six men, grown men, because he's pulling at this gate, and it's being deformed by him because he's he's pulling at it. His power is the, the ability to manipulate and control metal, and he's pulling at this gate, and it takes a soldier to with a rifle to knock him in the head so he can break his concentration. The only difference in this film is that they show the villain in this film in the window watching on. Played by Kevin Bacon. His name is, well, he has a couple of names in this movie. But the name they keep is Sebastian Shaw. Well, it doesn't fast forward it, but it switches over to the first time you see um, Charles Xavier. And he's a child. And he runs into Raven, who turns out to be Mystique. Sees a child. She broke into his family mansion. He finds her. She's trying to trick him, being pretending to be his mother. Mystique's power, she can change into any person and mimic their voice. And it doesn't work because Xavier is a telepath. A very strong telepath. And he reads her mind and finds out it's not her. And he just kind of takes her under wing. Even It's... I, I don't like Xavier in this movie. He's 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 really arrogant, presumptuous. He's condescending. He gets better in the next film. He comes becomes the person he's meant to be. He becomes a Stewart version at one point, the Patrick Stewart version, which everyone knows and loves. And Raven, she's she kind of plays into him because like. He helped her out in a big way, and she doesn't know beyond him what to do, and so she just kind of goes with it. And later, well, okay, we'll, we'll go back. So, Kevin Bacon's character has uh, Magneto with him, and he's trying to make him move this little coin. And he, he can't. He just he can't seem to concentrate without, you know proper motivation, which is why they bring in his mom. Two soldiers escort her in, and uh, Sebastian's character, well, like Sebastian has a gun, and he says, if you don't, if you don't move that coin, I'm going to kill your mom. I'll give you the count of three. To the count of three, he doesn't move the coin, mom's dead, and that's when Magneto unleashes his power. He kills the two soldiers. That, that scene's pretty cool. The, the, their skull gets crushed in the metal helmet that they're wearing. And he just, it, well, he does Magneto stuff. I won't give everything away. I'm going to still leave you to watch the cool action scenes. They're, I mean, that, that's the one thing that's, that makes them good. The action scenes are always awesome. But the story's the same. Anyway, we'll fast forward. You find out that Sebastian is oh, well. This takes this takes place. I'm sorry. It take, fast forwards to the '60s. This takes place in the '60s, and so it's kind of cool. There, you find out Sebastian is the Magneto character in this. He's like, well, we're the superior race. We're gonna wipe out the humans, so only mutants can survive because the humans will never accept us. The same spiel. Uh. There is a female character who works for the CIA. CIA, can't remember. There's so many characters in here that are just forgettable. It's they only focus on the cool mutants, and that's that's good. But we already know the cool hu mutants and the cool humans. Give these other people a chance, and that's that's my big gripe about the next film, uh, Days of Future Past. Um. 
But I'll get to that. So she works for the CIA and she finds out about the mutants because she sneaks in on a meeting that Saul's having with one of the United States generals. And Saul's scheme is to have... He basically, he's the reason for the Cuban missing Missile Crisis back in the 60s. He, they make him the reason. That, that's clever. I mean, the way they tell it is clever. They change it up enough, but it's still the same us versus them. It's just, there's more stories out there, Fox. But, I mean, I... Okay, let me go all the way back. I didn't see these two in the, in the theaters. I didn't. I saw them on cable. And they're good, but they're not... They could be so much more. So much more. Why, why don't they... They stay on Earth. Why Stop staying on Earth. There's so much more out there. Disney Marvel has already gone to the galaxies. Well, to the galaxy. Guardians of the Galaxy. And in the other films, they've hinted at it. We know Thanos is the big bad. It's... That's another... Oh, man. I keep on talking about other videos and not talking about this video. <laughs> another video. All right. So, the the female CIA agent finds Xavier and... Let's see. Oh. And she recruits him to help out... Well, and Raven's with him. Mystique. She... They... they um. They, they know where Shaw is, and so they try to, you know, stop him. But what inhibits them from doing that is Magneto's also there, because he's on his, his revenge quest. Magneto's always on revenge. So, on Shaw's team, it's not only him, and his power is pretty cool. He, he can absorb energy, and then he can use it to destroy whatever he wants. So he's pretty powerful. He's really powerful. Uh, he has Emma Frost on his team. She's a telepath, and she can change her body into diamonds, so she's she she can block other telepaths, and near indestructible. And then there's Zazel, who is like uh, Nightcrawler. He can teleport, but he doesn't have to have line of sight. He can teleport in and out through walls and all. That. He's master of his trade. And there's another. The guy who makes tornadoes. He's like a he's like a downplayed storm. Uh, again, forgettable. There's other forgettable. I mean, I mean, I remember some other names because I saw it recently. There's Havoc. Uh, Beast is in there. He's kind of cool. I probably should have found a little bigger guy. This guy's kind of scrawny. I mean, he gets bigger when he's Beast, but that, I mean that's more likely prosthetics and CGI, but. It's good. I mean, I'm just nitpicking here. A lot. So, I, I mean, I, like I said, it's good and it's bad. Both these films. Uh, I won't even get into the Wolverine films. I mean, I, 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 I like it because I'm not a comic book fan. I like the Wolverine films. I don't like what they did with Deadpool. Even when I saw it before a new Deadpool, I was like, mm, something's not right. Uh, wow. Okay, so... Magneto follows the CIA's plans by getting his revenge story going by really cool effects. He takes anchors and tries to destroy his ship. But Shaw has a submarine built in and he detaches and he flees. Magneto tries to take the submarine out and he can't so he's being dragged under and he's about to die. And Charles comes to his rescue because he's a telepath. He knows what he's doing. He knows what Magneto is doing. He knows why he's doing it, but he stops him anyway because he's going to die, and he figures he could, he could help them out. So that's how he gets recruited in. And they, they, the um, Cerebro is built by Beast. Uh, I think you know, Hank McCoy is the character's actual name, and they use that to find a few other mutants. Uh, Wolverine does make a cameo, and he's, it's pretty funny. Uh, and then they go off to stop. Shaw, who is basically Magneto, and it's just, um, they show you how Charles loses his legs, because Magneto becomes Magneto, he's, he's basically always been Magneto, 
Except he was his, he was after his revenge tour. After he got his revenge, he does kill Shaw. That's cool. He goes right to being Magneto. It's mutants versus humans. And... Well, okay, so the... Well, no. You watch First Class and you find out on your own how Xavier loses his legs. Um, I'll tell you, in Days of Future Past... It's not giving anything away, but it's just, it's storyline, but that's basically first class. It's almost exactly the first film. Days of Future Past. Weird title, but hey. Now, this movie, a lot of people say, has fixed the timeline. Because the Fox Marvel movies don't have a lot of continuity to them and this continues a non-continuity I don't know why people say this fixes the timeline it really doesn't okay so it starts out in the future and there's these things called sentinels they're built by this guy named Trask back in the 70s uh, played by Peter Dinklage awesome actor if you don't know who Peter Dinklage is, Peter Dinklage is, you're not a Game of Thrones fan. <laughs> okay. These Sentinels were designed to hunt and destroy mutants. Yes. This is essentially X-Men meets, um, X -Men meets Terminator. Almost the exact same story. And the only difference is it's X-Men instead of... But yeah. It's X-Men going in the past and having machines that just don't stop killing. Yeah. So it starts in the future. They're being the, 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 the group of X-Men there. You see some familiar faces. You, you see Colossus. You see Iceman. You see Pyro. Uh, there's teleporters. They're pretty cool. Uh, a guy who somehow absorbs energy from other... Other mutants and uses it in a gun. I, I don't know who he is. And these are the forgettable ones because they die within the first oh, five minutes. And Iceman dies twice. So what's the point of him? And there's a love story in, in the future part that's just really pointless. Uh, I know I'm griping a lot about these, but. I, it's the action. It's the mutant powers. That's the part that keeps on bringing me back to these movies. They are awesome, the way they utilize these mutant powers. I love it. I'll keep on watching it. I don't care if it's the same story. I love the mutant powers. It would be even better if they did a different story. But I don't work for Fox. I don't work for Marvel. I, I, I'm just a fan. So... I can gripe all I want. I'm not going to change anything. I'm still going to see Apocalypse. So, and, well, we're coming up on my next gripe. There's this one mutant that somehow, when she puts her hands on either side of your, your head, where your temple is, so you, can, so you can send your conscious back to your younger body. And at the beginning, she's like, I can send you back a couple weeks, maybe a month. It's kind of stretching it, but... Most people can't handle anything beyond that. It's just its too much. They're being torn apart mentally, physically. They, they come up with the weirdest few, uh, um, time travel concept I have ever heard of. And I don't like it. It's, okay, so the old X-Men come and meet up with them. You got Storm... Uh, Wolverine, Magneto, and Xavier. They come meet up with the younger X-Men and they're like, w we have a plan. We're going to use her powers to send back Xavier. No, 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 Xavier can't do it. Yeah, he's powerful, but he just he physically wouldn't be able to do it. And Wolverine's like, well, what about a person that can? Mr. Regenerative over here. And oh, there you go. That's Wolverine in the movie. That's part of the, one of the cool parts. 
and one of the parts that's where the continuity falls apart again, but I'll get to that. Uh, so, they send Wolverine back, and this, it's 50 years. It's back in the 73. So I, I did the math. It's only, what, it's like it's nine years from, no, not even nine years. It's, no, no, it's seven years from now. Seven years from now, this is supposed to happen. Seven years. Uh huh. Yeah. Seven years from now, they're supposed to be the apocalyptic world where the Sentinels are destroying the mutants. People are in concentration camps. Everything that Magneto feared has come to, to light. And that's something that keeps on coming up. And I understand why he feels that way. Completely understand. He was in a concentration camp. In the old movie and in the, the new movies, they show the number on his arm. And it is a real possibility, which is completely not even part of this different topic. Not gonna get, not gonna go there. Um, so, okay, so we'll go with the, okay, we can send people back in time through their conscious, which, no, they do that. And Wolverine is the one supposed to be the uniting factor for Charles and Eric, Xavier and Magneto. And Mystique plays a role in this again, too, and so does Beast. So, Wolverine, Xavier, Magneto, Beast, and Mystique. They're the, they're the five big ones in this movie. And Quicksilver. Remember I mentioned about him in Age of Ultron? Yeah, he's in this, and he's in Apocalypse. The Quicksilver in Age of Ultron is only in one film, and that's how you have two Quicksilvers, because the one in Age of Ultron is dead. I'm not going to say spoiler alert for that because you should have seen Age of Ultron. It's an awesome movie. And I gave a spoiler alert in my review. So no. Yeah. One Quicksilver is dead. The other one's still alive. He's going to be in X-Men Apocalypse. And I like this one better. He's funny. He's interesting. I want to see him more. Not so much the other one because he was an experiment. He wasn't born that way. It's getting off topic. When Wolverine wakes up, he furts first meets up with Xavier. And Xavier has lost all hope and suddenly he's walking. How is he walking? Well, luckily they, they do explain that. And Beast is no longer Beast. Okay, so in the last film, Beast threw uh, Raven's DNA, made up a cure, more, more suppressant of the mutant gene. And so he looks human instead of big and blue. And in high enough doses or a different serum of some kind, um, it can suppress him even, suppress his um, appearance even more and give Xavier back his legs. So that's how Xavier's walking. The only side effect is Xavier loses his powers. Um, and so that's explained when, when Wolverine first meets up with Xavier. And Xavier is not too happy about it because he, he lost a lot. Um, uh, Raven went off with Magneto at the end because at the end of the uh, first class, you, you see the divide between Xavier and and uh, Magneto, and Raven goes off with him. So that really that really hurts Xavier in a big way, and he just he just shuts down. It's been ten years. He really hasn't had his powers for a while, and he has to use them again. He doesn't want to. So for a good portion of the film, he's wandering around without power. And you find out that he's a horrible, horrible liar. It's a little funny. There, there are scenes where he tries to lie, and it just doesn't work. For instance, they have to, they have to break out um, uh, Magneto. That's where Quicksilver comes in. Uh, Wolverine knows him because he's from the future, so he knows Quicksilver is part of the team at some point. They don't really explain it, they just, he knows him. He's a young kid here, they recruit him to just get out Magneto. And Magneto is in prison for assassinating Kennedy. Yeah. Um, so he's being held in the center of, um, 
the Pentagon. And again, it's a prison that can hold them because, well, this one was built before and for like nuclear fallout, and so it didn't really have any metal in there. And it <sighs> same thing told over again. But the jailbreak is pretty cool. They use obviously Quicksilver. Quicksilver is the Marvel's Flash. So. So, yeah, he can run really fast, like the speed of light or faster than that. I, I, they don't explain it. He just, he's fast, he's funny, he's cool. And they, they show, throw a little Easter egg in there because when, when uh, Quicksilver rescues or, well, you know, breaks Magneto out, it's like, oh, I, my mom knew a guy who can manipulate metal. So they kind of saw like a uh, father-son moment right there. But none of the, in that scene... You kind of see that Quicksilver gets it, but Magneto, he, he's always in his own world. He's, his, his, he's always on the mission of dominance. So he didn't really put it together. I don't know if they're going to bring that into Apocalypse. I don't really care if they do. It's not that big of a deal because, I mean, Quicksilver is here and out. It, it, there's some development, but not a whole lot. He's just a cool character. So that's done. And then they go after the Raven, because Raven is the reason why they, the, um, Wolverine got sent back. She killed Trask all the way back then, and that's what really pushed the Sentinel program forward. And that's why the future sucks. So they're trying to stop that, but Magneto always has his own plan. Of course. And... So, Magneto does Magneto, where he's like, I'm going to destroy the humans because they're going to out, they're out to destroy us. I've seen it done before. <laughs> he has a very strong argument, but he just comes about it the wrong way. And Xavier's still trying to figure out what that balance is. And then they do, then they do a, 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 a talking of the Charles, the Xavier's. Because Wolverine says, you're right, I'm not the guy to prep you. But look into my mind, and he's talking to Xavier. Look into my mind, see what I've seen, and look even further, and you can talk to yourself. And he does give himself a prep talk, and then you see the Xavier that we all know and love. And so, it goes from... Killing Trask, which, I mean, it wouldn't change anything, to killing the president, who's Nixon at the time. It's just... It's the same thing. The only thing that's really cool about it is Magneto's doing Magneto things. He picks up an entire baseball stadium, and he's flying in there with it, and he's taking control of the Sentinels, which was a really cool scene, but watch it for yourself. It's It's... He picked up a stadium. The last time you see Magneto do something like that was in the third X-Men, which is not the greatest of X-Men, but you see Magneto in that one pick up the Golden Gate Bridge and bring it to the fight. It's That's the kind of stuff that keeps on bringing me back to X-Men. It's not the story, it's the action. It's the amazing action. And, that's, and so... Uh, so, Charles talks to Mystique's... Yeah, I know. That was an abrupt stop. <laughs> Charles talks to Mystique via telepaths, and he's convinced... It happens throughout the movie, but this time he actually convinces her not to kill anyone, because you're just making us look like the enemy is like, okay, I'm not going to do it, but I'm still going to do my own thing. She does, and... Basically, that's the end of Days of Future Past. Because it just, I mean, because from my knowledge, from what it shows in the trailers, the, uh, Apocalypse is going to be back in the past. It's probably going to take place in the late 70s, early 80s. I don't know. Uh, but, okay. Next segment. So, Wolverine changed history. Yay! But did he? Bum, bum, bum. I don't think he did. Now, he comes back from the past, you know, through the... He, well, he just kind of wakes up. <laughs> That's why this tra time travel concept is so bogus. 
You go from someone sending you back through time and then you just wake up. So history for everyone else has changed except for for Wolverine because obviously he's the only one that went through the old history. So how does it not change it? Well, in the film, Beast explained that you can't really change history. When you go back in time, it's like throwing a pebble into a, a, a river that's flowing. Pretty strong current. When you throw the pebble in, yeah, it creates ripples. It probably changes a few things, but the st stream keeps on going the same direction. So, what did they change? They got rid of the Sentinel program. Yeah, that's pretty cool, but who's to say there's not going to be another person out there who finds some kind of file or something that starts it up all over again? And the other thing that's in here, and they're telling the story again, Stryker is in this. Now, Stryker is a villain for Wolverine, more or less. He's, he's military. I don't know if he's a scientist per se. I, I know he likes to promote science programs, the Weapon X program to be specific. That's how you got Wolverine. That's why there's adamantium in his body. That's the adamantium claws instead of bone claws. The continuity still isn't there. When they did the, when they did the Wolverine origin, it was an older guy who recruited Wolverine and the other mutants in that one in the 70s to do special missions. The guy was, I, you could probably say, late 40s, early 50s. This guy is like mid-20s, early 30s. No continuity. Did they really say everything's fixed? No, they didn't. And this one, again... Well, okay, so this one, when they pick up Wolverine at the end... Okay, so Wolverine gets stopped by Magneto again, but he, he can't control him because he doesn't have adamantium, but he puts rebarb in him and sends him flying off into a body of water, and Stryker finds him, but it's not Stryker, it's Mystique, and they don't really explain that aspect. Maybe they will in Apocalypse. I don't know. I hope they do. There's a few holes in this movie. It's the action, I'm telling you, it's the action. The action is too cool to pass up, even though I didn't see it in theaters, but I'm seeing this one in theaters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're gonna eventually, probably another flashback or something showing Wolverine getting his animantium skeleton. That hasn't been told. It has been told. X-Men, give us something new. Besides new action scenes. The action scenes, I could, they're always going to be amazing. I just want new story. Hopefully we'll get that with Apocalypse. So, yeah. Um, if I keep on going, I'm going to go into a, a, a topic I do want to save for another video. I don't know when I'm doing that one. Because next one is going to be the blooper reel. Yeah, I accumulated more funny moments. So, next video is the blooper reel 2. If you like what you saw, like it. If you think other people will like it, share it. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned. Live your imagination.